In this example, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to find the mean standard deviation and variance of a discrete random variable. So here's the data that we want, and then we copy it, and then paste it into an Excel document. Now I've created this Excel document and have things set up. I want to find the mean, the standard deviation, and variance, and then these are the equations to do so. The mean, input times the probability, and then the sum of that. Standard deviation, the input x, subtracting the mean, and then the square of that, times the probability, and then we sum all of those up. Now remember the variance is just this squared. So we can just, once we have this, we can just square it, and then that's the variance. Or we can get the variance another way right down here, and basically when we sum this up, it's just going to be the sum of this, right? So this if this is a standard deviation because it's the square root of all this. The variance will just be th this squared, which is just this value under here. All right, let's paste our values in. I have to go here because it pastes the x and p of x for me, so I do that. I'll just redo these, guys. Okay, so here's our data. Now we need to compute this because this would be the give us information on how we have to or compute our mean. See, we need the product of that, so that's easy. Just take this times this one and then pull that down. Now I'm actually going to pull it down all the way to about here. Okay, let's go about here. And the reason being is because in the future, if I pay, paste data into here, it'll automatically calculate it for me. And these zeros don't hurt when you're summing, so that's totally fine. Now over here, this is a little bit more complicated, but you got to take the x minus the mean. Well, we can't quite do that yet until we figure out the mean. So what's the mean? Well, again, the mean are the sum of all these data. So then we go down here and write sum all the way down to that one for future data. So there's the sum. So this value actually is the mean. So what we can do is just say that equals that cell. Okay, so that's the mean the sum of these products. All right, now that we have the mean, we can figure out x minus the mean squared times the probability. So let's do that. We have parentheses, and we want the x value minus the mean, which is here, but we don't want the mean to move, right? So we're going to put a dollar sign in there and end the parentheses. The reason why the dollar sign is in there is so that I can pull this corner down and that uh, cell location won't move. It'll stick right there. All right, we need to finish this though. We need to square it. And then we need to multiply by the probability. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to click in front of here and I'm going to multiply by the probability first. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that order of operations are done correctly and it doesn't multiply the exponent. You know, it probably will work at the end, but I'm just going to put it in here and type this one and then times. So you can see I'm doing this equation. It's the probability times the difference of these two squared. Probability times the difference of those two squared. Okay, then hit enter, and then it's going to, we're going to bring it all the way down to here to match. And then at, you can see that the I8, that cells remain the same. It's taking these two values multiplying and subtracting those. Okay. All right, so now we need to sum this up for this information. The reason why we need that is so that we can get the standard deviation. It's the sum of all of these guys. So I just summed them up. Okay, now let's see what we have. The standard deviation is the square root of the sum of those guys. So here's the standard deviation equals the square root of the sum of those. And then the variance actually is just this squared, or this value right here. This will be the variance, right? Because the variance is always the this value squared. So I'll just type equals this number. Okay, so that's the mean standard deviation and variance. Let's match some of that up with our problem we had. Here's the mean. The mean is 1.8 of this data. 1.8, yep. Compute the standard deviation, 1.2 on decimal place. Standard deviation, 1.2. And this question doesn't ask about the variance. But that's how you find each of these three 
things with Excel. And now if I had a new data point like this one, 0 0.14, everything updates including the mean, the standard deviation, and variance. So it's very nice and it can be used for any problems in the future.